How to file 1099s in QuickBooks Desktop. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University, and we are going to talk about how to file 1099s in QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, first, head over to the QuickBooks University. That's a training site that uh, I run. I've got a series of training tutorials over there that uh, are going to really help you understand QuickBooks so much better. Also, if this video is helpful, please subscribe, please like the video, share it with as many people as you can, just get the word out about the channel. I sure would appreciate it. So, okay, let's get started here. We're at the home screen in QuickBooks Desktop. 1099s are coming up. You got to file these things here in the next week and a half. You got to at least get them to the recipients and you have to file them with the IRS at the end of February. So you have to, QuickBooks make it really, really simple to do if you set it up right, all right? So that's what we're gonna walk through today is how to set these things up in QuickBooks to make it quick and easy to file your 1099s. Now, a couple things first. Um, this is not an exhaustive video on the differences between the 1099 NEC and the 1099 MISC, the miscellaneous, um, and there's plenty of other 1099s for dividends, interest, and so on and so forth. In general, the 1099-NEC is when you pay subcontractors or individuals or somebody that does work for you that you pay more than $600 and the 1099 miscellaneous is for rents, royalties, those kind of things. Most small business owners are going to be filing a 1099-NEC. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you do have rents, you will do a 1099 miscellaneous. Uh, secondly, I highly recommend filing these online with the IRS. Uh, you have to use a service to do that and you can do it through QuickBooks as well makes it much simpler than having to mail these things to the IRS. And if you choose, you can mail them to the recipients. Uh, totally fine. All right, so let's get started here. We are on the homepage QuickBooks and a couple of things. Now, if you are just getting started on 1099s and you have not done any preparation work throughout the year, you've got a lot of work to do uh, unless you have one or two 1099s. Uh, and the reason I say that is a good practice, and I've, I've said this in some other videos, a good practice is throughout the year, you want to do this throughout the year, is anytime you get a new vendor, you need to send them um, a W-9 to fill out and send back to you. A form W-9, uh, when they fill it out and give it to you, that gives you the information you need to fill out the 1099. So if you're going through here and you're saying, oh my gosh, I've got... 20 1099s I got to file and I don't have anyone's information, you've got to go out and get that information first before you can even go into QuickBooks, put in the information and do the 1099s. All right, so that's the first thing. Get them a W-9, have them fill it out and send it back to you. And if you don't do this now, I would start in 20 or now for 2022, go ahead and send this W-9 to all your vendors as you're paying bills, you know, so we always, you know, with our clients, we say, okay, when you get a bill, send a W-9. You can email it to them and say, hey, fill this out. I need you to send it back. Some people go as far as uh, saying, uh, before I'll pay your bill, you need to fill this out and send it back. That way you can put it into QuickBooks. When you get to the end of the year, 1099s are a breeze. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, the second step is you have to, you know, determine who is supposed to get a 1099. And again, I'm not going into an exhaustive review of the rules, but in general, if you pay an individual or an LLC as a contractor, meaning you don't withhold taxes, so they're not an employee, and you pay them more than $600 during the year, you need to give them a 1099-NEC. Simple as that. That's the most basic rule. Now, you do not have to give them to corporations, uh, and you don't have to give them to you know places you go like Home Depot and Staples and you know, office supply stores, places like that. You do not have to issue those. It's generally going to be uh, an individual or a small LLC business and most likely a sole proprietor or somebody just working on their own that you're going to have to issue this 1099 to. So you are going to have to go through your vendor list to see who you paid and who you're going to have to send a 1099 to. And you may have to ask some people, all right? So the first thing I want you to do is go to this vendor's drop-down list you're going to see here 1099 forms and you're going to see the first option print e-file don't go there first the first thing i want you to do is go to this report review 1099 vendors now you will get a list of vendors here and you will see eligible no or yes all right so 
all of these will say no or yes. Now, how do we get that yes? You have to determine that. When you go to the vendor center, let's go over here, and I'm gonna pick, uh, let's say Hamlin Metal, and I double click on that to open up the uh, information. Go over to the tax settings. You're gonna see right here where it says vendor eligible for 1099. So as you're going throughout the year, when you, as you determine this throughout the year, uh, you're going to check this box, and the vendor tax ID is going to be the information they gave you. Now, this can be their tax ID, their business tax ID, the EIN, or the Social Security number. But you want to make sure that you enter that information here, all right? And then you also need to make sure that you have the name of the company, the address, all that good stuff that's going to go on a 1099. So that checkbox is going to basically signify here whether there's a yes or no. So Hamlin Metal, you can see down here, it says yes, and it's got the tax ID. So once you identify all of these vendors and you check that checkbox, you're gonna have to go through here and say, okay, who, uh, what tax ID numbers am I missing? So if I have any yeses on here and I am missing a tax ID number, you're gonna have to go get that. Now, once you clear all that up, and a lot of people have questions, well, what if I can't get a tax ID? Well. You know, in general, the IRS rule is you still should issue a 1099, but leave it blank. But you have to uh, definitely make a concerted effort to get that tax ID number. I have seen plenty of times where people file them without a tax ID number because they couldn't get it. Uh, the IRS will probably send a notice at some point that says, hey, there was a missing tax ID number. Um, depending on that notice, a lot of times they're just basically asking you, hey, you need to try to get this. All right. But really, really try so you can avoid getting those notices to get those tax ID numbers. Now the next thing, go back up to the vendor drop down, go to 1099 forms, and you're gonna pull up the 1099 summary report. All right, so I pull up the 1099 summary report, January through December, 2022. Now it's showing zero for some reason, now I'm not sure yet, but you wanna pull yours up and see. But you look up here, you say 1099 options. Okay, only 1099 vendors. We don't want to include all vendors, just 1099 vendors, like the Hamlin Metal that had the box checked. The next thing, only 1099 accounts. All right, well, if I change that to all allowed accounts, then it does pull up the 1099s that I have to do. All right, so you can see here, it says uncategorized. In total, use thresholds, which means the $600, okay? But it's still showing the $532 here and some of these smaller ones. Now, I've also got it on MISC, M-I-S-C. So let's change that to NEC. Okay, so it keeps it the same. All right, so as you're pulling up these reports in QuickBooks, this is a sample company file. So some of the settings we'll have to check, but you know, just make sure that it makes sense, You know that you're under NEC, uh, that the right ones are pulling up. And this is just to give you an idea of, okay, here are the 1099s that we're gonna need to file. Now, once you've gone through these steps, you've gotten the tax IDs, you've entered the information, you have indicated with the check mark uh, in the vendor setup, uh, which vendors get it, you go through your 1099 report. Once you have a lot of that stuff ready to go, you are then ready to process the 1099s in QuickBooks. So what you wanna do at that point we're going to go back to the vendor drop down menu and we're going to say 1099 forms and we're going to go to print e file 1099 forms. All right. Now, you will get a pop up box that says back up your company file. I went ahead and did that so we didn't have to sit here for that. So you'll have to back up your company file and you're going to see here, okay, you, you can read through all these different instructions and learn about filing options, etc. Uh, the important thing that we're going to want to do here is say get started all right so first of all we want to select our 1099 vendors select the vendors that need a 1099 nec now going through that report before prepared you for this now the only the ones that are going to show up here are the ones that um, will show up on this screen so it says only 1099 vendors are shown here to make a vendor eligible go to vendors vendor center and edit the vendor and check that checkbox like i showed you a few minutes ago so we're going to say, okay, these look good. Now, if there's some on here that you're like, you know, they don't need it, you can uncheck, you can check, uh, and so on. But we're going to say this list looks good, so we're going to say continue. So this will say next, verify your 1099 information. So you want to make sure, okay, you've got all the tax IDs. Now, if there's a missing tax ID, it's going to alert you to that. Uh, the company name, first name, last name, address, phone, 
uh, you generally don't need a state and payer state number, okay, unless there's some kind of withholding on the 1099, but generally there's not. Uh, note down here, tax ID and address are required for e-filing, and that's a good point because if you cannot get a tax ID, you are going to have to paper file. So we are going to click continue. Everything looks good there. Now, we want to map the vendor payments, and this is extremely important in QuickBooks because uh, you have to basically say, okay, you know, when you go in and let's say you enter a bill or it's a debit card or something like that, some kind of transaction in QuickBooks, you're going to put it to an account. Uh, and when you put it to that account, you have to map that account to a 1099 box. And that's the only way that QuickBooks knows that, hey, okay, you said this vendor, Hamlin Metal, needs to get a 1099. And you mapped the account for job expenses subcontractors, as an example, as a 1099 account. So now that Hamlin Metal has a payment through that account, it needs to go into 1099. All right, so that's how it works within QuickBooks is you have to get this set up right. Make sure you signify the vendor, you put in their tax ID number, and then you map the account, and QuickBooks will know what to put on that 1099. So we're going to go here, and we are going to look at this and say, okay, show 1099 accounts. All right, repairs, building repairs, expense. No, we're going to omit, the, omit those. Gas and electric, we can omit that. Uh, let's see, prepaid insurance, we can omit that. Job expenses, materials, no, we don't need that. And let's say, okay, subcontractors for cost of goods sold, yes. We do want to do that. And we are going to put that to non-employee compensation. And then this one, freight and delivery, no. We do not need that on our 1099. So you're going to go through and you're going to map which accounts that will go on your 1099s. All right, so next, let's see, let's say continue. All right, review payments for exclusions. All right, so you may have some payments to some vendors that should go on a 1099 and some that shouldn't. All right, so let's say Hamlin Metal, uh, let's say we bought a, a tool from them and that's not necessarily gonna go on the 1099, but we also hired them to do subcontracted services that would go on a 1099. So you wanna make sure that you don't put the tool expense on there, but you do put the services expense on there. Uh, the same thing could be said for uh, you know, anything that uh, maybe they sell us or maybe we reimburse expenses to them. It's going to show as a job expense, but it's really not uh, a, a service that we need to issue a 1099 for. So we don't want to put that reimbursed expense on a 1099. All right, so let's look at view included payments. So we're going to say, okay, CU Electric, 532 overhead. Okay, check, VU contracting. We're going to include all those. We've got a lot of them to them. Middlefield Drywall, Hamlin Metal, $2,500 install. So this is all service work uh, that we had. Okay. All right, so all of that looks good. So let's close this. And let's see, edit the check number, or field to include an appropriate notation, view excluded payments. We don't have any excluded payments, okay, from there. Uh, you can also view this detail report. And so this looks all good. Uh, so uh, also up here, this is an important note, is you want to make sure that you exclude. If you paid anything by credit or debit card, it does not go on the 1099. This is just uh, a check, cash, that kind of thing. And the reason is they changed this. And the reason is, is because the credit card companies will be sending a 1099 for the credit card processing. So you don't need to include those. All right. So let's hit continue. All right. Now let's confirm our 1099 entries. So we want to look through here and we're going to see, okay, so we don't have that one unmapped because the electric we said we don't need to do. Um, included on 1099, 2500 bucks. That's right, because that was the uh, subcontractor cost for job materials. So that one's going to go on there. Same one with Middlefield Drywall and VU Contracting. Okay, and there is some unmapped payments. Uh, let's see, to Larson Flooring. Okay, and that is, these are also under the threshold, so that's okay. Okay, 
So everything looks good. Let's hit continue. Now, you can print and mail the forms to the IRS or file electronically. Now, you can do it either way. If you do the go to 1099 e-file service, you will pay a fee for processing. Uh, generally, it's definitely worth it. If you print, you have to order 1099 forms and you have to make sure that you also get what's called a 1096, which is a summary. Now, you can buy these at uh, office supply stores. They have to have a, a certain red ink on them when you send them to the IRS. You can't just print them on a printer. That's why I say just follow these things electronically. The recipient copies that you send to a recipient, those can be on a printed sheet of paper. That's okay. It's just the ones that go to the IRS cannot be. And so you will have to go out and buy or order specific forms. So again, file electronically, that's going to be much easier. Now, once you do that, once you file these, once you get them to the, the contractors, the vendors, you're pretty much done. You've got these things filed. Your 1099s are good to go. Now, I will show you here. If I go to print, you basically just say, okay, here you go. You click last calendar year and it's going to take you uh, you know you got to check off which ones you want to do and then you're going to print these things so you're gonna have to make sure you put that pre-printed red 1099 paper in your printer before you print okay okay so i'm going to close out of here and if we hit save and close once we get those filed we are good to go if you have any questions any concerns any comments please feel free to leave those below also uh, head over to the QuickBooks University. Love to have you join us over there. I answer all the members' questions via email or a private Facebook group. It's a lifetime membership, one-time fee, and I will answer, answer your personal QuickBooks questions. Also, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff to this video. Help me spread the word a little bit for the channel. Thanks so much.